All right, that break was fun. Not quite as fun as the breaks last week with all that meatloaf. Just how could it be? How could crushed it be? that midseason meatloaf Ugh. last week. Casey won't let us do it more than we did get it back on the docket yeah, twice. You lobbied. This we is why there's lobbyists in Washington, even though I think that's what's wrong with this country. We got mid off season <laughs> meatloaf. Lobbied. We got mid off season meatloaf. Meanwhile, Jay Wayne was trying to get mid podcast meatloaf every week. <laughs> Podcast meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't quite happen, uh, but yeah, we're we're gonna, as you said, <laughs> boom. There it is. We uh we got this Philip Lindsay discussion is about to get heated. So before things get too crazy in here, I wanted to bring up this Marlon Mack question we got. We got two or three questions this week on Patreon about Marlon Mack, and uh, that community page on Patreon is just popping off, and things are just. Really exciting over there with Dynasty Trades and should I do this or should I do that? How about this? First round draft pick over here. This guy offered me two threes for this. I mean, it's crazy and a good time over there. And we, again, a couple questions about Mac. And we want, I wanted to give anytime there's a just a hey, you know, this trade is on the table, we try to give some quick feedback to help people out. Um, and then we bring, we put it together on the show for people and, and, and take them to the mics. Um, so Marlon Mack, a sell high question. And I, my direct answer to uh, Riley here was we're going to get into this on the podcast, but wanted to throw my opinion out there now for you, just in case that trade button is burning a hole in your pocket. If you're that kind of person, because I know how it goes. I'm one of those type of people. Um, I said, I can't sell. Yeah, how. If yeah, you want big Co's attention, just mention the word trade. You got it undividedly. <laughs> Send me a text or an email about a trade and we are having a conversation. Um, I told Riley, I said, I can't sell high on Mac right now. I said, I'm a high, I'm a sell high kind of guy. That's what I do. But we've been waiting on Andrew Lux running back for years now. Looks like we might have found him. By the way, I'd be trying to get Naheen Hines on the ch- on the cheap to back him up because Hines looked good too, even as a runner last week. So that again, a couple questions about Marlon Mack on Patreon this week. We're about to get into some Philip Lindsay. We're going to move up to the Patreon this week because we're a little tight on time. Moving forward, we're going to hit you with the Lindsay. But we wanted to let you know that that's where we're moving it. Well, we tried. We well, we tried not to shortchange you on the right. on the Aaron Jones and the Tariq Cohen. Well, sure. And and the answer you just gave on Marlon Mack, not to throw shade at anybody's show, but that could have easily been the Marlon Mack segment on most other dynasty shows. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah, we don't shortchange it when we're trying to dive. To at least give you the angles. I want to have a conversation, yeah. right. and I want you to make the decision at the end of the day. Let right. me give you our thoughts. There you go. And it might take a little while, and maybe you're not upset about that, and you probably don't listen to this show because you just want to, somebody to tell you what to do and then yell at them when they're wrong. But we know that we know how many people listen to this show, right. and, though, and we feel like that those people... And you guys, the listeners, appreciate the fact that it's just not a one and done answer. Right. There is no crystal ball in fantasy football. If you look, if you thought it was like that, you'd be making millions of dollars betting the NFL picks right. and lines. And go try your best to, to make money betting the NFL. It's freaking hard because you don't know what's going to happen every week. And so that just parlays right over into the fantasy football. We don't know what's going to happen. So that's why the three of us like doing this. We get here, we go back and forth. We sometimes we agree completely, and sometimes we disagree completely but most time we're in the middle and somebody has hey, well I like this and I don't like that and I like this and as you you hear our conversations come to life on a player and by the end of it somebody might have changed their mind sure you know so or at least start leaning in one direction or another well we're let's just, see we're just trying to fill you with all the ammunition you need to make an educated decision on your own educated we're going to tell you everything guesses. we know everything we see we're going to tell you what the stats and the facts are we're going to tell you what our opinion is we're not just going to be like oh yeah well you got to go get Philip Lindsay <laughs> well, let's see if we can change some opinions on <laughs> Philip Lindsay here. We'll start in the same order. Jay Wayne, you first. You got to go get Philip Lindsay. First round pick, Philip Lindsay. I know I said, <laughs> you know, that's why I addressed it at some point here. I just don't want to be that show that's like, oh, wow, well, this is, you listen to something, it's like third round pick all day for that guy. Third round pick. Yeah, third round pick. Well, these guys that we're talking about here have earned this question. Sure. Like, you don't just go throw around first round picks for anybody, Mm-mm. and you don't just expect to get that trade accepted if you throw around a first. If you throw a first round pick at the Zeke Elliott owner, he's going to laugh at you in the face. Yeah. You know. If, yeah. Zeke had a bad week. You throw a first rounder over there. It's getting either first of all rejected quickly with a laugh at, or he's going to let it hang in. For, right. Hang up there for two weeks out of disrespect. For we've, your disrespect. We've talked about it on this show. I've seen other people talk about it. If you throw out a trade and it doesn't make you sweaty or your butthole pucker up, <laughs> that just means you're an asshole and you know you're clearly winning that trade. 
There's like, nothing re- there's nothing wrong with starting it off. I, I, there's I'm nothing not, wrong with being an asshole. I'm not saying yeah. that there isn't <laughs> that you should just be throwing your best and final offer up there right away. If you've listened to us for any amount of time, I like it's a slow build. Slow slow build. Okay. Figuring it out, and I don't mind if you okay. get upset about that trade. But when it really comes down to brass taxes of what you because if. It, Everyone values players differently, and sometimes right. that trade that gets laughed at by 11 out of 12 players, the 12th player does it. But for the most part, when you really have to get down to it, that final trade that you're sending out, you get the yeah. tight butthole or the sweaty palms, if you or send, you're like, if should you, I send this? And then you send it, and you're like, should I take it down? Right. If, right. You, send <laughs> Phillip, if you send Philip Lindsay in a first for Todd Gurley, you wasted somebody's time. You got them excited to see the trade come in, and then they see it, and they're like, I don't even want to talk to you right now. We might not be friends anymore. So first round pick for for Philip Lindsay, where you at? Uh, Jay Wayne. So you want to give me a running back that's about to get me 15 or more points every week <laughs> for a first round pick? I'll take the running back. Let me get that running back. Survey says. Let me get that running back. Ding, ding, Let ding, me get ding, the ding, running ding, back. Ding, 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 ding. Second then, most popular answer, 20 out of 100 said. <laughs> I don't know. Right, right. I'm not as good as Steve Harvey as, no. as he crushes it for sure. Uh, and then, I mean, if you want to look at him actually play the game of football, it's very impressive to me. Just I, how's he doing? What he's doing? It just look. It looks so good. He's just so physical. He's not the biggest dude ever. But then you and go that look would at be his, the initial. That's the hate. If your sizes then. Do you don't like it? And a draft capitalist. He's not the guy for you. Undrafted. No draft capital. But I would say if you're a draft capitalist. Five, eight, one ninety. If you're a draft capitalist, then the way they're using him should make you feel even better about if you're a draft capitalist. I mean, the usage out of this guy should make you feel like, mm, well, I'm a draft capitalist, but I'm all, if you're a draft capitalist, you have to be a usage capitalist as right. well, right? I mean, well, I mean, right. That's your angle. Right. Is they got the capital. <laughs> right. He's, and you're going to get the usage. He's At got the usage the tri- right tri- now. The tries. Yeah. With right. or without Royce Freeman. I looked at this cat's college game log, and this is is out of control. Like this last season, or last year in 2017, he ran the ball 301 times, averaged 4.9 a carry for 1,474 yards, added another 23 receptions for 257 yards. There's, let's see, one, two, three, four games where he had 18 or 19 carries. Every other game over that. Is, is 20 or more. There was a 41 carry game. This dude was a workhorse for Colorado. I didn't know that. Right. Uh, that and mistake on my part. Here. Not not <laughs> even not even like the fantasy players or the other people who are and an, and professional talent evaluators, I'm sure, disregarded this guy because he was 5'9, 190. Didn't get invited to the combine as if you've watched any Broncos game with Mark Schlereth calling it. He'll say it a million times how it's a sh- crying shame this guy didn't get invited to the combine, all that and above. And that to me, it just goes back to like people like if this guy didn't fall into the right situation or or he wasn't from Colorado and there wasn't people in Colorado right. checking him out, right. that like he probably falls through the cracks and maybe he doesn't even end up playing NFL football. Well, like and this is just to goes back to like it's all about situation coaching and and all of that kind of stuff to get you into the right uh place and time to be the guy that you are right now like he could have easily maybe went somewhere and just been pushed to the back of the line and but the broncos gave him a chance he's the guy he's been in colorado like the in-house scouts figured this out he could have gone elsewhere as an unrestricted free agent you can sign wherever you want he wanted to stay and play in denver he's he's from there and that's what he wanted to do so they had an edge based on him having preference there um he's he's a he's a guy who knows his history he actually hit up terrell davis Davis, asking him he's a colorado native if he could get his jersey number like what a class move there! Like he, so he. I mean, you got to go a little. It was twenty years ago. Terrell Davis won the MVP of the in the National Football League. Like that doesn't seem like twenty years ago. I remember yeah. that. That was doesn't seem that long ago. I'm, That's crazy. We're getting old here. So old. But for him, he, he's so like I just. To me, Philip Lindsay has that it factor. He's just so oh, grimy. Phil Sims, Phil Sims doesn't like when you say somebody has an it factor. He's he's just so determined. Nobody he's likes not going to be denied. So. Yeah, who's Phil Sims? Nobody I, likes I know that who guy. Phil Sims is, but yeah, he just he won't be denied. He's just out there. He doesn't he doesn't give a fuck. He's about to get it done for you and your team, and he's about to put it all on the line for his team. I know he got thrown out of the one game. Went back and watched that. It was kind of a bogus play. He didn't throw a punch. He was trying to get a ball loose and it was a late 
it was a late play. The play was over. He shouldn't have done it. He learned from it, and it was borderline whether they should have thrown him out or not. But they did. Uh, it's not as bad as like, oh, he threw a punch. I mean, it looked it sounds way worse than it was. Yeah, I'm okay with the punch anyway. However you want <laughs> sure, to whatever. It. Yeah, you don't know what the other guys are saying or doing. <laughs> you got to defend yourself. He's five seven, uh, so small man's complex there. But he doesn't play small. I mean, he's. I'm just so impressed that not just the PPR floor, but the, the between the tackles running. And, and I love the way they're using him. I mean, the Broncos aren't crushing it this year, but just there's a lot of counters and a lot of little little misdirection here or there. He gives you one step one way, and then he's off in the next direction. And, and the Bill Musgraves in this offensive line, Larry was a big blow to this line, but I like this line coming in, and their, their run offense has been pretty solid all year round. The pass protection, meh, but been a, been, a, been a good offensive line, and, and I like Bill Musgraves. And so you, you put that and you combine it with his decision making, his his he's so fast and the burst is incredible. He's from zero to 60 in a flash. And he's he, between the tackleness for how big he is is great. I know 17 red zone touches and just the ferocity that he plays with. Now, this past Sunday, he did get walloped. He got just pop. You're, you're going to have to take some of those. It's going to happen. But it didn't phase him. Like, it just seems like a guy who's just about to persevere. And I just feel like, and, and the numbers are there to back it. The usage is there to back it. With or without uh, Royce, Freeman. Royce Freeman. Right. So I I was ready to give a first up for a couple weeks now. I didn't offer it. I know you got him in one league, Casey, and I've been thinking about trying to get him from you. And I'm thinking, like, ah, it's been too late. I waited too long. I waited too long. But, like, I'd still, I'd give you the first round pick. You taking get that? Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, <laughs> All I don't, right. I don't think so. Just because of the way my team's built in that league, um, I, I like that team. I you like a it a lot. I got backs, a bunch. I got a bunch of depth. I got a other, bunch there's of other running, running backs, backs that I would prefer to sell before I would sell him. They're okay. probably not worth first. Yeah. But I would rather get some twos and maybe just hang on to Lindsay and see what happens. Um, obviously, in that league, I got guys coming back. I got Sony Michelle, who's out right now. I also have Zeke, which you would think for the next couple of years, I got a solid trio with Mark Ingram being the, the odd man out, possibly. Um, then that's not even adding Lindsay and Brita and Crowell and, and all those fun type of guys that might be able to fetch fetch me some return here. So I don't necessarily know in that league if I would be sending them off for a one. I don't even know if I'm sending them off at all at this point for a one. There was a point in time where I was like, oh, a two would be real nice, but I'm going to sit on them for a little longer because I bought him with all my fab budget. Like I'm so I, there was a point in time where it's like if I bought this guy with all my fab budget and I could sell him for a two, great, what a return on investment. But as it's gone on and as I've watched him more and more and you know when you see the size at first you're like, "Eh, but I'm multiple documents on here as I'm not a sizeist. I don't give right. a shit how big you are and what uh, it's it's about you. Can you play the position? And I think he can play the position and again they have draft capital tied up in Royce Freeman. But this guy's been out there doing his thing, and they clearly like him more than Royce Freeman. Everyone's like, give Royce Freeman more run, and I, I've been in that camp somewhat. But this guy's out here doing his thing. There's no reason to, to take him off the field and to give him any less touches. So I guess short form of the answer here is is no. I would probably hang on and, and, and uh and keep Lindsay for another year and just just see what happens. I mean, obviously Dang Royce it. Freeman's not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm sad Phil Lindsay. It does give me some pause. I'm like, maybe I should cash in on this. I know I know we're well, I don't think Jay Wayne's team's doing too great in that league if I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> ready to roll here. You ready to roll? Yeah, I just picked up a big dub this past week. <laughs> I'm big dub. What's your record? Uh I think it's Five, five, four, four, five, four, five, three. Okay. It's, okay. it's a sixth place total points gets in the playoffs in that league. So, Ooh. um, my record's not great right now, but my points are 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 pretty decent. Uh, so you're probably going to have a top six pick by missing the playoffs because well, the record's not good. But You've my record's not luck. good. But I could if I if I if if I can get right and get all my guys on the field at the same time. Sure, I'm. Uh, 60 points maybe outside of the sixth place and this this next couple of guys aren't aren't that far apart so i'm just i'm uh, really a on a big team. sliding I'm, scale you got a really good team there's no I'm doubt about four it. and four in fifth place right now all right all right I've, i don't think i'm too far behind points wise on jay wayne 
So although I didn't have a great week this week and I haven't okay. looked at it. Just what you know, just wanted to see if you got it's yeah, just, I'm only like twenty more points than you. You know so. your league. If that that guy's got a chance to maybe yeah. compete for that number one one, that gives you one more shot at it. Sure. And that's another reason, another factor of why it would give me a little bit of pause. But I think and for if, now, and I think, if you don't make the playoffs, maybe Philip Lindsay helps you earn the one one. Right. I think I'm. I think I'm holding holding the Lindsay right now. And for anybody that is not familiar with what we're talking about, is if the if you've got a twelve man league and the best six teams make the playoffs, the set the bottom six teams. They have a bracket of their own, and they the winner of that in this bracket, particular league in this league gets the one one, and you go backwards from there. Some most traditional leagues, the bottom six that don't make the playoffs, they go in reverse order from worst to first for getting draft picks. This league plays for the and first. this league plays for the first round pick for the one one. With so the six, with the sixth overall player, regardless of record, total points gets in. Okay. Um, so, but it, that's, that's just one particular example. So you have to be in fifth place with your record. Right. Okay. To be safe. Yeah. And that, that's just a way to make it exciting for this league. That was just one of those. So things. that it's this league option. is a little different in that, in that. So it does give me a little bit more pause of trading the Lindsay or getting the one or anything like that. Uh, but just some extra I've, strategy I've been there. leaning a little bit more towards maybe I'm going to hang on to Lindsay. I know that you can get here standing with the, with the bag in your hand. Like I know you've been. We talked about it beforehand, and what what really burned you up is a couple of years ago you got left standing with Lacey and Hill in your hand, and oh. you, you know obviously this guy is nowhere near on the level where those two were even starting out. But right now, he's he's looking he's looking really solid. I like I, everything I've seen from him, and I'm um if I was in if I needed a running back, I would for sure be giving up a one to try to get this guy and. Uh, I I'm not sure I'm I'm not sure I'm letting him go for anything but a, a, a surefire like top five or better player because it's just like we've or been talking about the top five or better top draft five pick, better draft pick okay. because I, I look at this year like who are you, you outside of those first Chubb just got relevant for you and a lot of people maybe even had him slated as the sixth best player but he could easily like you could be drafting your penny or you could be drafting your Rojo or. You could be, I mean, Sonny Michelle didn't help you out for a while. Like Darius Geis isn't doing anything for you. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with those guys. A lot of those receivers aren't really in your lineup. I like what DJ Moore's doing. I like what I see from Christian Kirk. Um, I like Calvin, Calvin Ridley. Ridley. Like I like all those guys, but I mean, right now they're not replacing my running back uh, points, points week in, week yeah. out. And I, you know, maybe I don't see any reason why Lindsey can't continue to do what he's doing and and give me that twelve to to 16 point threshold if not maybe a little bit more if this team got a little bit better let's not forget the quarterback play isn't outstanding right now sure well even you mentioned the rookie running backs that you go through and let's just talk about the complete league of running backs and points per game there's the guys at the top which is the ones we were chasing to begin the season um you know those top end they todd Gurley, 30 points a game melvin gordon kamara both at 25 20, uh, 26 27 james connor and saquon are holding it down at 25s obviously that 25 was supposed to be Le'Veon bells then you james white sneaks in there with 21 kareem hunt christian mccaffrey joe mixon we knew those guys were going to be good ezekiel elliott so that rounds out the top 10 james white jumped into top 10 james connor snuck into top 10 with Le'Veon bell being on eight straight bye weeks and then you start out, then TJ Yeldon's in there with the injury to the Jags deep offense. There's Tariq Cohen. There's old man, don't give up Adrian Peterson. Marlon Mack shows up at 15 points a game. And then you got Kenyon Drake. Geo had a couple games without Joe Mixon at 13 points a game. And there's Philip Lindsay right there at 13.5, but was kicked out early in one game for this so-called punch. Mm -hmm. So like you said, give him a normal game and maybe Philip Lindsay's averaging 18 well, points a game. Just say you give him... 10 more points on average and he ends up with 12 around because that's about what he's doing okay so that's gonna be t he's 15 points a game that would make him a back end a high end rb2 like the highest rb2s right there with a b a adrian peterson and the underperforming bad offense david johnson who doesn't need a high end rb2 right now who doesn't need a 15 point a game guy which is the way a the way that jay wayne started it he said if you want to give me a guy that's going to get 15 points a game my running back spot i'll take it i'm a good summarizer so <laughs> i'll end my my point of saying that i don't think i'm giving up the one i think i'm holding Lindsay for the most part and and i'll kick it to you and ask you the same question well like you like you said and i'll unsummarize and make it really long 
Just kidding. I'll keep it short. <laughs> no, you I won't. did. I had Just kidding. <laughs> couple, I had Eddie Lacy and I had Jeremy Hill on the oh, same dynasty here team. Here we go again. <laughs> He just brought it up. I'm going to expound <laughs> upon it. I had these two guys on the same dynasty team. It was Jeremy Hill's rookie year. I got him for a dollar, right? Had Eddie Lacy paid up for him because that was actually a startup year too. So Eddie Lacy crushes and Jeremy Hill comes on out of nowhere. It, but I mean, he was an SEC power back and it solved nobody to be able to tackle him. So I liked him. And then boys crushed. Going into the next year, I had two of the top five dynasty running backs on my team. Couldn't have been happier. By the end of the year, Jeremy Hill was nowhere to be seen. And Eddie Lacy was had been gone. He had disappeared and he was coming back around and he was had a By couple of plays. He disappeared. He doubled in size. <laughs> <laughs> he took a, you had to zoom out. Bad jokes are funny. You had to zoom out because it was blurry when it was too close. <laughs> so I got I got left over the over the next year, I got left holding the bag on two guys that were supposed to be awesome and they were awesome and then they weren't awesome anymore and so sell the first year running back that's good if you can get uh, I, I, yeah what? if you can get something really good for him i'll sell anybody this if i get a fair offer why didn't and you i sell will alvin hold kamara? still for that huh why didn't you sell alvin kamara or kareem hunt i did i just sold alvin kamara well sure this for year talk early this year right but last year with the same examples that you're giving of saying, sell, sell, well, just for on what Jay, I'm just well, saying what Jay Wayne no, said. First of all, both of those guys I drafted in the first round of rookie drafts, and Philip Lindsay came off the fab, like you said, because even in rookie drafts, nobody even knew who Philip Lindsay was. He just appeared out of thin air week one, and if you think he didn't, he, well, he was there in the preseason. He okay, was, that's do, fair, fair do enough. Well, in the preseason, he he was there in the preseason. We, but Casey brought him up, said, "I think this guy could be a pretty solid space back." He, I he, gave him the set. I said, "I didn't think he would be an every down player, but I think he could be a really, really good satellite back." This is true. I Wrong that. on that front, right? Well, he is a good satellite back. It turns out he can also run it between the tackles, <laughs> right? right exactly. Which is a quality that Eddie Lacy and Jeremy Hill never had. That satellite back capability of the PPR floor. Those True. boys didn't have that. No, they didn't. Well, neither one of them were anywhere close to 188 pounds soaking wet either. But I completely agree that Philip Lindsay looks. He's so he's fun to watch, and he's quick to hit the hole. And to be 188, 190 pounds, he's like you said, he's not scared to hit it. Mm -mm. He can get the edge. He's he, he's a lot of fun to watch actually because he will plow right through the tackles and he looks smart running through those holes. He looks like a he's got very good vision to run yeah. the ball. Like you said, Agreed. I had no idea he had 300 carries in one season in college. Boom! He can get the edge and he can catch it a little bit and he can sustain so, workhorse ability. Whoa! He has three hundred carries in. He has three hundred carries in college. Not at that a he's small, get that. small college. And there is Royce Freeman still. It here. wasn't small college. He played at Colorado. Well, they boys play middle schools. <laughs> no, they but, don't. <laughs> but to this point in the season, Utah, he's been Southern one of the California, best. Arizona State, oh, Washington boys, State. The boys are the boys are real real teams. Washington. Right. It's a good conference. Decent conference. Oregon State. So I take that back. They don't play middle schools. See. He uh, he's he's had been, forty-one he's been, carries versus Arizona. He's been absolutely likes out as an NFL running back, and I can't take nothing away from him. Um, I did sell him earlier this year. I bought him off off the waiver wire, like Casey said he did, and I sold him, and I couldn't have been happier about it. I just because I hit on my trade and I zeroed in on my guy, and I got who I wanted. But Bobby Woods, correct, solid trade. Yeah, not so, mad at that. So that said. I mean, the guy I picked up, I'm in love with, and his value has gone up since then. Let's but take Eddie Lacy and Jeremy him, Hill out of the equation. But since I sold him, he, he's he gone on to continue what he did in, for, in week one of the season and surpassed it. And I I got nothing bad to say about Philip Lindsay right here. He's, he's, so you're giving up the first. Take Eddie Lacy and Jeremy Hill out of the equation. Just Let's just poof. Like they're gone. Like they really did disappear. The problem with me giving a first Phil Lindsay is they do have Royce Freeman and they haven't gotten into any real legit cold weather games yet. Not that that's going to mean Phil Lindsay don't play football. He's from Colorado and Royce. Or I'm, but I'm saying Oregon, like so. turn to the run some. I mean, get this. Yeah, he got 18 carries last game, but he's 190 pounds. What does that mean? 
It means he's not built to what's, take. What's that have to do with the cold? He means he's from not two hundred and twenty pounds. He's had forty carries in a game. Oh, you're in reaching, Colorado. Big Colorado. Yeah, that's cold. A, that's you're reaching a for the reaching? cold. That's a reach. No, it's not. Yeah, it happens every year in the NFL. Everybody says that. Oh well, when it gets into cold weather, they got to lead a little bit more on the run. That's yeah, what happens. I, I'm not saying that they. That's don't. not a reach. That's, that's actually kind of what you say every single that, year. That's that, wouldn't fine. that help him then? That's that's fine. I'm just the guy is from. It's not like he's just like. Some guy who came from a hot climate and now is in a cold climate, and when it gets cold and they have to lean on him, what's gonna like? He's from Colorado. He knows how to deal that with the cold. Was, that's not what I meant. I about think he's the whole meaning team, more they're gonna be about lean on the Royce. team and what they. I think a little bit more Royce. And at the, right now, that they just gave away Demarius Thomas, which is good and bad because I think that might mean a little bit, a couple more catches for him, which would be fantastic for his PPR value. I, I, I understand that, but also. The team, like obviously, the the Broncos' offense is underperformed. The Case Keenum project the quarterback is underperformed. The case, okay, but if the quarterback running under, backs have overperformed, Philip Lindsay's overperformed. I wouldn't say that that Royce Freeman. The combination of the two, I think Royce Freeman's Royce has been good. Awesome, in, Philip in Lindsay, Philip Lindsay's been electric. I don't, I don't know that it gets. I don't know that it keeps going. I don't, I don't know if it gets any better than this. Now. Maybe they get a quarterback and it gets better than this. Maybe they get a quarterback that's actually doing better, you know, getting the ball to the receivers, not name Emmanuel Sanders. And maybe there's not quite as much work for Philip Lindsay. But right now, he's exactly what his team needs. And it wouldn't, it, yes, he's, I w- it wouldn't surprise me if he continues to get 15, 20 points a game, which is worth a first round pick. I know Royce is there. To back up the point, regardless of Royce's, he was putting up numbers with Royce in there. Yeah, he was. Got elevated a little bit without him in there. But, I mean, this is dynasty, and you see a guy, and you evaluate him based on his talent and how he looks on the field. I understand opportunity, and I understand scheme and all that. But, man, when I see someone that's that talented and that is that ferocious and good at what he does when he's doing it, let me get him on my team. And if I got Royce in there that's going to muddy things up, I understand, but I got I got I got to get that. I think Royce on my is, team. is a really good player, and I was. I agree. I'm cool. one of the guys who thinks Royce should should get some more carries. But how can you give him more carries when the guy in front of you is doing what he's running hot? Philip Lindsay's Phillip doing. Philip Lindsay's running hot, but I mean they're both rookies. Neither one of them's going anywhere. Still not sure what the cold weather thing had to do with anything. <laughs> you know, I didn't say he <laughs> wasn't the, from Colorado. These are not the droids you're looking for. If he get if there's more running plays, that's better for him, right? Not necessarily. Why? Because you're not th- you're not threatening man. with the pass. Don't look at me like you you don't know what I'm talking. No, about. No, I don't. But if if you still you got this grin on your every, face like I said something retarded. If it's cold and everyone's going to the run, then everyone's going to the run. No, Bo. When it's cold and everything gets tighter, you got to be able to play in tighter spaces. Right now, when it's nice and warm and not even just a little bit chilly, that would be you're, ideal for you're airing Lindsay it to out. Play and now the defense spaces. is kind of there spread out. There's nothing being aired out in that Broncos offense. Well, there's threats at least. I'm saying when it's cold and everything gets a little tighter and everybody gets a little bit more compressed on the field, then it's not going to be quite as easy. And that's when you get a little bit more knockdown drag out. And I don't know if he, it might be a little bit more Royce Freeman time. I mean, maybe, but that's, that's like saying that if I'm from the North, I didn't say nothing about him, you, him being well, from the I'm, North. I'm, I'm just talking saying about that, that's like that, the way football teams okay, are. No, no. This is a cold. You're saying that because it's getting colder and things are getting tighter. Colder, bad weather, snow, right. wind, winter. You act like every it, year we don't talk about the fact that teams lean on the run. It was when already it gets in December. It snowed in one of their games already, and he was great. That was a warm weather snow. Uh, it has to be cold enough to snow. <laughs> <laughs> snow, like snow comes down in the That's broad like, in, if, in the if, bright sun. Out. If you went to Colorado in the winter time, it would be like, oh yeah, Big Co might struggle in the winter. <laughs> if I'm from Pennsylvania and I go to Colorado in the winter time, I don't struggle in the cold. I didn't say Philip Lindsay was going to struggle in the cold. I said the entire pass offense comes down a little bit in the cold, therefore hurting the running game. Mm, I'm not buying reach. it. Okay. All right. Well, we'll revisit. Reach. We will revisit. You guys act like you never watched football before. I, I'm <laughs> no, no, no. There's a bigger reach. Yeah, I watched plenty. Obviously, of football. I I know that when it gets cold and you're getting the playoffs, you need a run game. They have a run game, and he is he's a big part of that. Right, he is the run game. He's doing well. I didn't say he was. All right, so we like him. I didn't say I didn't like him. Jesus. Well, so you're not give, but you're not giving up a first round pick for him. And situationally. What would the situation be? 
This is the uh, first time I've even heard situationally. So right, because before we started, if you're going to give me a first, day, I'm shipping all, them out. It was all day. All day. So we're, we're chipping away we're at chipping it. Away. Chipping away at me. We're <laughs> chipping away. We're breaking down barriers. Chipping away. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the last two chips have been nice without Royce Freeman. And, I, and I, this was the I when I when we were talking about this, leading it off, I, I said the same thing you did to lead it off. Of course, I'm not giving you the one one. If I'm oh and eight, I'm not going to Lindsay. I'm not giving Lindsay for that. Fair enough. Like, a lot of these guys, I think, are based on the lower the mid to lower end of the first round. Yeah. Uh, with the exception of maybe one or two guys for each of us going the other way. I got I got the 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 tight end league that we got. Um, I'd probably look at giving you I, I have a really good shot at making the playoffs. I think I'm six and one or maybe six and two with second most total points. And I got a boatload of receivers. I only need to start two running backs each week because of the way it happened, the way it played out. Tons of receivers, decent tight ends, and I got David Johnson, James White, and Eckler. Real literally the only three. And so I probably would be looking at adding to I, I probably could give you that first rounder for Philip Lindsay if I had taken a week or two and tried my best to do something better with it and I got shot down. And I, again, which I, I actually that's in that league I haven't ever I haven't sent out my first round pick for anybody. I just got so many leagues that one kind of gets kicked to the side. We but, talked about uh Penny uh Rashad Penny last week and how somebody wanted to trade him and then you know you Big Co was saying yes trade him because now I'll have two first round picks. And, you know, I like having two first round picks. So, like, I can understand why you're saying that you would sell him. That That's uh, essentially your logic of saying that you would sell him for a first penny or uh, sorry, uh, Lindsay for the first round pick coming into this thing. That was your logic of saying, yeah, let me ship him off for the first round pick because I know I can take these two ones and, and for sure go get a more surefire running back or player, I guess, is is was essentially before we started that was your position yeah and, and i get it i understand that point and but i'll bring up the same point that i brought up last week is that it doesn't always work that way you can't always take the two ones and turn them into this sh- surefire player no it's great in the theory and i understand the theory 100 percent. but it, it just it doesn't always work out that way and then while we were talking about it again off air you said you know, I'll turn into a surefire player that I know what I'm going to get out of him for the next three years. I don't know what I'm getting out of Lindsay. And my response was, is like, you know, we've made trades for other players. Like we've traded for Le'Veon Bell. Certainly didn't see this. coming. <laughs> yeah, that didn't you work know, out. You traded for Ezekiel. Elliott, and although it's been good, you certainly didn't know that his center was going to get an autoimmune disease. You certainly didn't know that they weren't going to have any uh, wide receivers that were any sort of a threat before Amari Cooper came to town. Sure. Uh, so to, you know, to, I understand the theory of saying like you like the safer player of saying I like this three year window of knowing what I'm getting like you almost really never 100 percent know what you're getting like. Do I like Melvin Gordon right now? Love Melvin Gordon right now. If Melvin Gordon goes somewhere that's not as great as the Chargers next year. Do I love Melvin Gordon as much? I still like the player. Not sure I love the situation as much as what's going on in, in L.A. And he could he's got it does have a bad knee and maybe the knee goes out like Jay Ajay two years ago. He was a huge pick. Everyone loved Jay Ajay out right now with that rickety knee finally reared its ugly head and he still wasn't great this year. So like the out, the long-term outlook is never a hundred percent what you think it is. David Johnson this year. Did, did you know that that it was going to be as bad as it was not like it's terrible. Like you're not upset that you're starting David Johnson week in, week out, but it's not. Oh, I've definitely been upset. It's not the 25 points a game that you thought you were getting. He's still in my lineup, but I'm definitely not. It's not what I was signing up for. Right. Definitely not what I was signing up for. No, you're right. I mean, you could try to get, but in each of those, in each of those, I mean, we traded for Le'Veon Bell. We traded for uh, uh, Zeke Elliott. We traded for Jarek McKinnon. Look how that worked. Yeah. Dante Freeman. Yeah. You don't know. And, but just Jordan Howard. Sure. Uh, you, if, you, if you said prior to this season, if a guy like Lindsey popped up and you were like, I could trade Lindsey for Jordan Howard prior to what's going on right now in Chicago, you'd probably be like, give me Jordan Howard. Yeah. But right now, situationally, give me Lindsey. Give me Lindsey. Right. Yeah. That's the NFL. That's why, uh, that's why they keep us coming back. Right. Each and every week. Which we hope you do. <laughs> As the listeners, we appreciate all you guys. I think we got to get the FF out of here. Mm-hmm. Right. right, we are the FF Dynasty. You can hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at Dynasty Big Co, at 
I am C Myers at J Wayne's World. It's been a fun discussion. We wanted to get into some more. We're going to take the rest of that Marlon Mack discussion, as pr- previously mentioned, over to Patreon, as well as maybe talk about some of the trades that went down this week in the Plus, NFL. Plus, oh, all the trade talk. Golden Tate, Alshon Jeffrey, how uh, Ty Montgomery's faring with all this and how Ty, or, uh, Golden Tate affects the whole Eagles staff, How what Demarius Thomas does uh, for the Texans, Cortland Sutton and his outlook. All that stuff's going over to Patreon. Uh, and we're there's plenty of... There's, I think, 29 questions lined up for the show of Patreon. We've got some great uh, questions. For our week eight or week nine or whatever it is, topics. We probably won't get to all those. There's no way. Um, but <laughs> There's no way we get to all that. That's just what's on the docket. That's what's on the docket. Sure. Oh, you know, maybe we don't record into all those, but we've texted. We'll text. we've, we've typed answers into half of them already, just for the ones that sounded like they were urgent. Right. Um, try, to, try to take care of the family over there. Absolutely. Which, if you want to join the fam, you haven't decided to do so yet you want to this week head over to our website the ffdynasty.com there's a link straight to there on our homepage over to patreon you can also get there from patreon.com slash the ff dynasty uh, give us that five dollar holler you get an extra hour plus of content every week we do the after show we do the pleasure chest we're answering tons of questions you get access to the community page uh, we're doing a sunday sit start live q a uh, well, no, it's not a live Q&A. We're answering uh, sit-start questions uh, where anybody on Patreon gets priority. Essentially, is live. There's a YouTube chat that you can and then, respond. In. Right. So if, you, so if you're not a Patreon member. live as member, it gets, right? Unless you're in front of me. It says go live. Click button to go live. <laughs> if, you're, uh, if you're not a Patreon member and you want to get some more access, definitely head over to YouTube. Hit subscribe there. We got uh, videos going up each week. You'll get notified of that. And then you also get a notification when we go live on Sunday mornings, and then you can get your sit start questions answered there after we get through answering all the Patreon members' uh, questions. Make sure you hit that little bell notification button on YouTube to get immediate uh, notifications. Yeah. Make sure you go to Taco Bell for your free taco. Right. <laughs> for the stolen bases. Please, if you're on <laughs> iTunes, hit us with that five star review. That would be top notch of you. Just so nice. Cheerio. Uh, with all that being said, let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been the FF Dynasty's Married to the Game. Peace.